as you guys know, I am, um, a, 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 I am a uh, associate professor here. I teach a variety of courses, mostly in, in, in the area of public management. But um, as Dominic, uh, as, as Dr. Bearfield has said, I, I have been involved in a um, national study to, to collect um, 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 broad information about you know, what are the attitudes and behaviors of, of, of a master's degree students in, in our public affairs programs. Um, and um, in, in, in particular, our, our question really is, is, is about the socialization processes that um, our students are, are undergoing and to what degree those processes um, and these various characteristics or factors that represent these processes are, are, are related to your career interests. In this case, particularly um, in, in the government sector. Now, I've collected a whole lot of information and this is just one part of, of, of this study. And, 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 and the results at this point are, are still preliminary, but, but nevertheless, I, 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 uh, I do want some comments, some, some questions, and also I, I have some questions for you. So how many students are, are, are how many students in here are first year students? Okay, how many are second year? Great, perfect, okay, good. So, so at the end, I'm, uh, there's, there's some findings that I'm, that I'm a little confused about, and, and, um, and I, I, I wanna see what you got to say um, in regards to these. All right, so, Again, a national investigation of the relationship among program characteristics, student characteristics, public service motivation, and government career interests. All right, introduction. Um, just, just, just at the, the very start, we know that, um, that there's a need to attract the best and brightest employees for, for public service organizations. And this is a, a quest, of course, that, that all organizations are, are um, engaged in. And in, in, in my opinion, uh, these individuals, that is those who are the best and brightest, are those that are not, that, that are not only um, competent um, in the work that they are, uh, they're gonna go into, but also are, are um, interested in this work. And, and this is very important because we can you know, find jobs, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the jobs that we are, uh, we are we're going into are, are the things that we really wanna do. So in my opinion, the, the, we can get the best result in, in, in terms of performance, in terms of satisfaction, and in, in terms of commitment if we have employees uh, that are interested um, also in addition to being uh, competent um, in, in the job tasks that they have to do. And, and at the basic also sort of so a premise here is that higher education uh, degree programs are in a good position to help foster these dual goals. And as a matter of fact, most programs say that they are in the business of you know making you competent, but also um, you know they're, they're developing various you know program attributes that are designed to sort of increase and foster your interest in, 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 in into the careers that, that you're going into. Um, however, th there's a problem here, and, and of course, like any good research, you you want to find what the problem is and try to detail that. And um, the problem in this case is that there there's evidence that the interest in government careers. Uh, are, is waning and at best is, 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 is very stagnant. And um, um, th there's a survey that, that has shown, for example, in, um, in 2011 by the National Association of Colleges and Employers, they found that just 6% of students that, are, uh, that were surveyed, and this was almost 40,000 students across all 50 states and in all major uh, universities, um, uh, um, they, they, that only 6% of these students plan to work in government at any level. And then that includes federal, state, local. Um, and this was the lowest you know, finding since this question was been asked by, by these survey um, uh, um, people um, since 2008. And even more troubling here is that less than 3% of those students who are in STEM fields, which is science, technology, engineering, math, the very fields that government believes um, that um, uh, 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 recruiters of government believes are, are critical to um, the, uh, the functioning of, of, of public organizations and also there's a shortage in, in terms of these, uh, these employees. We find, or this survey found, that just 3% of those students who are in these fields are actually interested in actually going um, in, into the public sector. So as you can imagine, you know, th this is a, a big problem here. Now, um, uh, and it's sort of to, 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 dig, a little um, in, um, to dig a little deeper here, um, the the um, Partnership for Public Service, which is a nonprofit program that, that was established, I believe, by, by Congress, um, 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 they, they stated that when, when, when they ask um, these students as well, um, you know, in, in terms of the things that they're looking for in work and, and, and what is it about the public sector they like and what, are, what is it about, you know, the public sector and, um, and the government sector that they um, um, did not like, and what they found was that the single 
most popular reason why students believe that they would work in a, in, in a federal government is for benefits. So, so basically like insurance and um, vacation and retirement, right? You know, they don't care about the work and, and certainly we, we didn't see salary here, right? So, so, um, so they argue, well, but, but benefits, these other sort of hygiene factors in the STEM uh, from, from what um, Herzberg has, has said. However, the most common um, area of concern was the viewpoint that the federal government, and we, we can probably ar also argue the public service in general, um, um, they argued it was an exercise in frustration. And, and, and that uh, it was hampered by red tape and surrounded by bureaucrats. And, 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 I, and I know you, you, you've heard it a lot, you know, you know, being in Texas. You know, I've, I've heard my share of this as well, b being here. Uh, but, but, so, but nevertheless, these are common sort of um, statements or concerns that we obviously believe that, that are impacting these students' interests to go into these fields. And, and if we look at this, this trend here, again, sort of just highlighting the, the depth of this problem here, that, that um, you know, we see a huge amount, and I don't know if this, yeah, the, uh, of people are interested in going to nonprofit or teaching, or the, the business sector, Medicare, but when it comes to state and local government, for uh, near, nearly 5% and about 6%. All right, so um, one explanation, one can argue, for these findings is that American citizens are just generally distrusting a government because of their American anti-federal traditions. You know, you know we, we hate big government and that distant government, that bad thing there that's, that's there to, to take away our interest. Um, um, as well as, you know, these, these things perhaps are also based on popular stereotypes. But at the same time, there, there are some, some legitimate reasons that, that, that has occurred in the public sector that has put a black mark on, on our field. Um, other ex explanations, of course, can include, you know, a, a polarized political environment where, where just quite frankly, we exist in a time where, where, where it's just popular to, to, to derail public employees um, in the government. They are the problem, but also a very real concern of the job market. So perhaps people are not, students are not interested because they perceive that the job market in the public sector is, is not one in which the, 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 that they're going to either get access to the kind of jobs that they want or the pay isn't going to be what they uh, desire. One can also assume that, um, however, um, um, that these viewpoints, if they're um, held by the adults, so they're held by mid-career um, um, and so forth, are likely then to be passed down to the, the next generation of um, public servants. Um, um, yet, I would argue, at the very least, that it, it is not, um, un, um, uh, um, 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 uh, what's the word here, unreasonable for me to expect that you know, the career interests of students who choose to enter public affairs programs would be a little better. Why? Because first of all, they've self-selected into these programs. And second, perhaps there's some socialization mechanisms that are going on in these programs, as these programs, many of them are claiming to, to be doing, to, that increases your interest, right? So I would expect it to be a little better for our, our students. And um, however, this assumption is challenged, that this is not what we're finding. In general, we find that, um, that the public affairs programs are losing the battle, essentially, in producing students that are interested in working in government. So imagine you're coming to get a public administration degree, and you're the students that don't, that don't want to work there. So wow. And it's very interesting. So if you don't want to work there, then how can we convince others who have no real exposure to this, to our field? Um, and that interest, interest in government, really what we found, declines over time. So generally, the pattern of results show that first years, or when you first entered, People say, yes, overwhelmingly, they want to work for government. By the time they reach their second year beyond, heck no. <laughs> you know, you know, so, 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 and we, we find this you know, repeated in two, the prime studies that sort of ch were, uh, had begun to chart this finding was Light and uh, uh, Cheskovsky. I, I knew not to try to pronounce that word. But, <laughs> but anyway, so the, there are explanations here in the literature, and there are at least three that can be found. One is that it's the program characteristics that matter, either from a, uh, perhaps from a socialization you know, standpoint that something's happening in programs and that's having a negative impact. Um, there are student characteristics. Maybe, you know, these students are coming to our programs really without no interest. They see the degree as, as a degree mill of some sort, easy to get into, um, um, and, and that they want to um, just get an get a education and just to move on, even if it's in the public service, nonprofit, or, or, or the business sector. Others argue that these preferences certainly are related to public service motivation. That is, some have argued to be some sort of predisposition that people have based on their societal, or parent, or cultural backgrounds. 
um, that pre-exist um, 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 uh, their entry into organizations and into um, degree programs. Others have argued it's a function of, of degree programs themselves. But, but nonetheless, it is an understanding that there's perhaps some motives here that, that we can identify these particular motives that we can then show that these motives are related um, in some way. And the scholarship, is, uh, the scholarship out here is arguing that it is indeed um, related. So let's look at the, the, the first explanation. And uh, so let me make sure I stay close to the time here because I can go on and on here on this. So uh, first of all, uh, you know, from the, the program characteristics standpoint, um, one scholar argued that individuals by being a part of a social institutions, and I say such as degree pro programs, resting on public values and by observing, interacting, and identifying with significant others in this institution, eventually eternalize the institution's values, norms, into their own identities. So, so basically career interest then, from the standpoint of students, um, at the end um, of, 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 of their education programs, should be a reflection then of, of the degree program's norms and their values, if, if this is the case. So, um, um, and interestingly, the socialization processes or the, um, of our degree programs in our field has been challenged and, and criticized. For example, a guy by the name of Harvey White, who was a then president of ASPA, argued that essentially their programs are not doing the jobs that they should be doing. Um, and that they're the primary reasons for why students are not interested in the field. And, he, and so he, he uses th th these big words like uh, ossification and, 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 and increasing propensity to subvert the programs to prepare students for almost any career other than public service or, or, or public administration. And he commissioned a task force to go about and to investigate more clearly what they believed this problem was. And thus his task force. Task force um, was headed by a guy by the name of, uh, last name by the name of Henry, and he was other prominent scholars that were on this task force as well. And they um, uh, gave a report to, to NASPA and ASPA. And here's their two basic um, concerns uh, that they found. They said, first, the problem is that the development of a complex array of degrees and curricula have blurred the core missions of public administration, the MPA, and the values that ground it. Number one, so they're pointing to, um, certainly in this case, curriculum. Something, we, we're blurring it, we're not doing a good job, we're sort of identifying the, the unique characteristic that public service, public administration, government work is um, in this field. Secondly, they argue that public administration faculties and the university administrators to which they report often fail to recognize that their mission is to provide a professional education for public um, uh, service, not to provide just an education in socialization in an academic discipline. So in other words, they're arguing that this just, just is not just getting a degree, you know, just going through the process, but you're here to go into a field to do a particular unique kind of work. And that they argue that many programs are failing the mission of, of providing you with this unique understanding, a unique grounding in the field that will prompt you to be interested, perhaps, and prepare to, to go into this field. So, so basically, if I was going to glean from this, they highlighted three major problems here. They, they said curriculum. We, we, we're, we're, we're going to know that. And, he, and they juxtaposed the MPP programs versus the MPA programs, MPA being more or less the traditional management focus, and, and the MPP being programs that are more analytical, quantitative um, in, in, in analysis. So they argue that these sort of mixing is, is not helping our, our, our field, and that we need to emphasize the, the, these traditional institutional core management principles. They argue that accreditation will put pressures on programs to sort of diversify their, their course offerings, to expand it beyond, say, just public administration, to include nonprofit and, and, and even business sector. And they argue that even some NASPA accredited schools put on their websites that, look, they're here to prepare you for the public sector, the nonprofit, and the business sector. <laughs> and they argue you can't do all three. You know, you're gonna, you can't do them all e equally well. As a matter of fact, we're, they argue we're doing it poorly. And faculty, you know, I'm a faculty, and you know, you know, I kind of bristled at this one, but, but he, he, he argued that faculty, well-intentioned, are teaching their research. They're teaching what they know. They're not teaching what students need to know when they go into the field, that there's somehow there's a disconnect. Uh, while while, while teaching, teaching our research can be beneficial, but, but that benefit decreases if, if what our research is, is on isn't what you need to be doing in the field. So, um, um, and others have sort of added more to this that, that, that blame faculty even further and say that somehow faculty are degrading our, our fields and, and are not um, sort of, you know, you know supporting our, 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 our profession in, in a manner that, that counters students' um, um, their, their, stere their, their stereotypes. Uh, but, but what they're doing are, are is, is heightening these, these, these stereotypes. 
So, um, but nevertheless, scholars had already begun the task of exploring the characteristics of MPA programs and, and exploring what, we, what are the impact that these characteristics are having on the attitudes and behaviors of, of students. And basically, here's what they found. They, they found, first of all, that, that there are two major orientations that, that, that exist within our field. One is the, the public policy degree, the more quanti or analytical, quantitative. Um, um, and then there's, there's the institutional management focus. And so, so they confirmed that, 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 that is there. Um, they also confirmed that these two types of programs generally are very different and, st and distinct in terms of their curriculum, what they're teaching, um, in terms of the, the, the faculty backgrounds. Um, um, many of them come from economic, um, for particularly in the MPP or economists um, and, and so forth. They tend to, to have longer, bigger credit hours, um, 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 as well as the, 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 student, the students are themselves are different um, uh, be between the, the two. Um, younger versus the MPP, older for, for the traditional MPA. Um, and also in, um, uh, the MPA students tend to have more experience, the MPP students tend to have less experience. So, so but however, overall though, the research found there were no significant differences between the MPA and MPA programs and student attitudes and behaviors. So some of the initial research said, well, there, there are these distinctions, but there's no difference. There, they're, they're taking the same jobs, they're interested in the same kinds of things. Um, and so while the distinctions are there, these are distinctions without a meaning, so to speak. Um, however, studies have found, though, particularly in terms of variables that are, I would argue, correlated or can be a measure of, of, um, uh, uh, of the socialization that's going on in academic programs, that they found that a relationship between time of study, how long a student is, is in their program, so year of study um, and so forth, Undergraduate major, they found that, that partic partic particularly undergraduates who are, comes from the humanities um, are more likely to, to be interested in, in public service. As, as well as, um, uh, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, yep, yeah, and, and that's, 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 that, that's pretty much it. So, so nevertheless, largely no big findings that can be sort of divided by MPA, MPP, but some indication that something is going on there be, uh, be, be between, within our, our programs. So, explanation two here is that career interest may be the result of larger pre-existing social, family, cultural forces that are correlated in some way with age, gender, um, and, and minority status, right? So we know that in America, we have a culture that, that, that socializes males generally differently than they socialize females. And some of that, stuff, some of that is changing, but, but that, that, has, that is there um, in, in many aspects, in many areas of our society. Um, minority status. We know that minorities in this country suffer s severely from racism, from other sorts of things. So they may be, so uh, research has shown that uh, minorities are more or less um, 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 interested, more interested in government careers given, some of argue, the protections that they, these organizations have afforded to minorities um, at a much earlier point than, than you, you found in, in the private sector. Uh, and the same for age. You know, generally the, the older you are, they argue you, you're looking for more stability, you're looking for uh, uh, you, know, you, you have more, you're more skilled um, and so forth, so thus you, you, you find it better, your home um, uh, is, uh, they argued, older, older employees are more comfortable, more fitting in these organizations versus younger employees. However, so, so given this, the research has largely confirmed to some extent that age, gender, minority status, political orientation, and relative um, employment status, in other words, the, the, where your parents and your relative work impacts your, your career interests, um, um, these things matter. Um, now, the interesting thing here is that these are the studies that has confirmed it, but many of these studies also looked at other things, right? So for example, Lewis and, um, Lewis and Frank also looked at minority status. No, well, what they did here, so I see here, no. They also looked at gender, but they didn't find a strong correlation or significant difference in terms of gender in their study, whereas other studies did. So, so here it's, it's hard to sort of interpret what the patterns or results here are, but but in general, it shows that older females, minorities, Democrats, and, and relatives that work in the public sector, students with relatives that work in the public sector, are more likely to prefer government work. So explanation three, public service motivation. And, these are, and this is a concept that's very old in the field. Uh, um, and it, it was in 1990 that Perry and Wise sort of went out and developed a more sort of um, 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 this is a systematic definition of what this is and, and, and as well as how to measure this concept. And based on their 
their beliefs. They said that this was, in, a, in the past, a predisposition. Uh, motives, uh, um, or these motives were, were something that people had, had the group that were developed from society, from their families, but that, that were grounded primarily or uniquely in public institutions and, and, and organizations. Other um, definitions come across in the field, you know, they define it as a motivating force that makes individuals deliver significant public service, uh, the beliefs and values that, that go, go beyond self-interest, and so forth. But the argument here, centrally, is that public service motivation is supposed to be a strong predictor of one's career interests in the public sector, in government. So as PSM goes up, the argument is that people are more likely to enter. And there's been some research that has confirmed that. Generally, employees who work in the public sector generally exhibit higher levels of public service motivation than employees that, that, that exist in the business sector. There's still some confusion about whether or not that's the case with nonprofit. However, we recognize again that public service motivation can be the product of larger societal forces as well as institutional forces. And part of research at this point is trying to disentangle which of these are most important. You know, and, and we're not very clear about, about in terms of which are more important, but what we do know is that it comes, there's, there's, the evidence suggests that PSM can be generated from both. So in other words, it can be generated from society, from you, somehow something in your career, something in your life, your family, that makes you more interested in doing these altruistic things. Or you may exist in an organization that rewards this, that fosters this over time. So you may have been low, but when you say you work for, for, the, for the United Way, you work for others, you say, wow, this is important. These are values that I want to um, support. So it, they could come from both ends. But what we find in terms of student characteristics, it has shown that it is indeed related to various, um, um, to, to the, the career interests of students, uh, both in terms of an overall concept, but also in terms of various is various um, um, dimensions. So I didn't say this, but PSM um, scholars have sort of noted at least say four dimensions of PSM: attraction to public policy, uh, um, self-sacrifice, compassion, um, and so forth. So, so these sort of characteristics build into a larger model of PSM. So they found that from a from a so from its individual sort of um, 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 uh, measures, these submeasures. Uh, they find that compassion is one of the stronger predictions or, or predictors of whether or not a student are, are interested in uh, government work. So as compassion goes up, they're more likely to, to seek or desire employment in the public sector. But again, this research is largely mixed really on, on what is the real pattern of, of these results. Is it just a, a predictor of government or, is, or can it predict nonprofit or, or, or even business? And some research sort of some, thrown some wrenches um, in, into this. Um, discussion as well. So my study questions here, and I just have three basic questions, I, nothing too serious, <laughs> you know, but again, so just, just basic questions. So one, to what degree do master's degree students in public service programs prefer government employment? But you'll find that many of these studies on students are based on undergraduate students. They're, 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 they have not studied master's degree students, which I think is a particular category because as I said before, you're choosing this. So, 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 so do, do we find the same patterns here? Um, what is the relationship that these various explanations have to your, to these, um, the, the, these interests? And is there some evidence that can lend me to make a proposition that one is a better explanation? So is it just primarily who, your, 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 your own particular characteristics that are driven by society? Is it something about our education programs or is it some, something about a unique individual characteristic of public service motivation? So my model really is this. So, so basically I'm exploring the impacts, the, the relationships that these variables have on government career interests. All right, so, so, so some of the methods. So really, as I said in the first part of this, is that, that this was a national study. So, so we went, we asked NASPA, which is the National Association of Schools of Public Affairs and Administration. It is the accrediting body of, of this program as well as other um, MPA public service programs. Um, they have a list that includes all known programs, even accredited and unaccredited. So I took that list, it was like some 300 or so at this time, and I randomly selected 100. And I con contacted those programs and asked would they participate. About 40 of them the, the, uh, decided to participate. And, and of that, uh, about few, few, two or three didn't actually respond or I don't know what, what happened, maybe some, some communication um, differences. But nevertheless, we got about 600 students that responded to the survey. And with the average response rate of, of their student population. In other words, I asked the programs what were their population of students that they sent the survey to. 
I collected that information and then looked at who, who actually the numbers that responded, and it came to about 35%, which is roughly average of what we expect to find in, in an at-large survey. So, so as, just quickly, so, uh, okay, right, so, so stage one, um, then another, so some of my predictors then, and, 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 and information of how I, I actually collected this information, here's the, here's the factors that I studied here, that I'll use, that I put in what I call stage one. Of, 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 of a hierarchical regression analysis. I looked at program name, and this bas basically, do the programs call themselves an MPA or MPP? And this is a very crude measure. And, and, and others in the field noted that this is a very crude measure because a lot go on <laughs> in programs. Things change and they don't change names to, to reflect it. So I will perfect that, 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 that later on. I looked at um, uh, discipline location. Are, they, are these programs located in PA departments? or are they located in other departments like political science or business? Uh, or were they standalone? Were they departments? So were they a department within a department or a program within a department, within a department or were they like a school, like, like the Bush School? They stand by their, on their own, um, on their own with, without being nested anywhere. I looked at their rankings from the standpoint of U.S. News and Reports, so where they rank. I looked at their accreditation status, where they're accredited versus not accredited. I looked at their, 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 their credit hours, how many? That, that they had, uh, they required students to complete. The number of full-time faculty, the exposure that the, 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 the program um, gives to students uh, in regards to representatives of federal, state, and local, as, as well as international. So I asked the question of the students, to what degree in your program, as a result of your MPA program, are you exposed to individuals or representatives from these um, areas. The argument here is, right, these are the socialization processes. You will be more interested in government careers, perhaps, by your exposure to those who, who work there, you know, and they can convince you, you know, that it's a good place to be. Also look at, looked at service learning opportunities and community environment. So basically, I asked the students, to what degree are you involved through your program in, in service learning opportunities or um, community involvements and so forth? The argument here is that as that increased, some research has shown or predicted that more likely for students to go into government careers. All right, so student characteristics. I looked at age, gender, minority status, citizenship, full-time, part-time, years of experience in the public sector, years of year study, first year versus second year, and, and the mother and father government experience. So I asked, are you, where do your mother and father work? And if they say they worked in government, I dummy coded that, that yes, they, 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 they were government, yes, um, uh, uh, one, no, zero. A any questions? Oh, I, mean, I mean, any clarifying questions? Okay. All right, stage three, I used basically Perry's um, Public Service, Service Motivation Scale, and it was revised by Kim in 2009. So Perry's ori original scale was like, 24, was like 24 items. That was a lot. I mean, when I first was doing these studies, and I, I used that large scale, and, and believe me, <laughs> you know, people complain. So, so, so I used this, used another version that limit that lowered that number to like 12 or 14 items, and, and it showed to be a, a fairly strong predictor of, of or, 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 or strongly related to the original item, original scale. Career interests, I asked and, um, um, these questions. And, and again, this study, I, in, in this data, I collected so much information that I can't possibly, you know, present all of them. It's like some hundred different variables that, 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 that I collected here. And, and um, so on this particular question, when it comes to um, preferences, I asked, what, which sector do you most prefer to work after graduation? And, and they only can make one choice. So government, at any of these levels, nonprofit or business. For this study, I then dummy coded those that chose government as one, everyone else zero. You got one choice. Okay, I did a three stage uh, hierarchical regression analysis predicting preferences for government and occurred in these three stages. All right, so just basically, let me go through these findings, this sort of frequency stuff fairly quickly. Uh, uh, most programs are accredited. Uh, that's in my sample, or most of the students, that is, because the, the unit analysis here are, are, are students. So most of the students in this um, sample came from accredited programs, about 83%. Uh, here's the states that they represent that came from all over the, the, the country, um, uh, roughly about 18 different states, uh, diverse in terms of lo locations. 
Uh, generally, most are um, standalone departments. Interesting. Uh, here, uh, most of the students uh, are from MPA programs, at least the titles of them are. Uh, in terms of government interaction, you see a nice little range here uh, in terms of, you know, uh, that most say that they have at le very least monthly interactions with representatives from government. Uh, and the same patterns can be found um, in general um, for, for all the rest of these. So, so for local, for, for federal, as well as for international. Um, for, for community involvement, we see occasionally, so uh, to not at all being sort of the, the, where things are skewed here, that many of the students here argue that they're not really involved in community involvement th th through their programs. Okay, and in terms of demographics, most are 30 years old. In this sample, they have about eight years of work experience and an average of three years of experience in government. Uh, mostly non-minorities, um, uh, and they're in this case mostly females um, uh, 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 versus males. Citizenship, mostly citizens. Uh, they're mostly full-time students, and um, most of them are second-year students and, and beyond, but, you know, but it's fairly close here. All right, so, so findings in terms of preferences. Here's what I found. First, to the first question, what do they prefer? We find that they ultimately prefer government work. Uh, number one, 55%, but what, about 45% say they don't. And, um, and nonprofit comes second and business third. And this is mirrors what other scholars have found. Now the question is, what are, what are the predictors of government interests? So, Three models. Um, the first model w w was the program characteristics. The second model uh, were the student characteristics. And the third model was public service motivation. So what we find is that uh, that the first two models, w I mean, showed a significant sort of um, explanation of the variance in in career um, interest in government. But lastly, public ser service motivation initially you find see have had no significant. Um, sort of explanation or addition to, to, to this uh, understanding the variance that's going on. Um, here is the um, hierarchical um, the last stage, the third stage model. Um, what's in green, if, if you're not uh, colorblind, <laughs> you, you can see this, I just realized this here. What's in green here shows that uh, variables that were approaching significance and um, in this case, age, minority status, and citizenship. So, and this is, mirrors what we find in the literature, that older employees, um, uh, 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 see here, actually in this case, younger employees value um, government um, interest, value working in government, government versus the older employees. Um, minority status, um, those who are, um, uh, again, the, the minorities were more likely to prefer government work. As, as well as non-citizens, in this case, <laughs> were more likely to, to prefer government work than, um, than, than, um, than the citizens. Now those that we, I found that was a significant predictor in this study was mother's background, and interesting, not the father's. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, so, so, so this uh, is an indication, I mean, and, and, it's, and it's fairly similar to what we find in, in the uh, development literature, right, that women back, the women's uh, mothers really are the keys to the success of their families. So I, I'm not going to put all that on these findings, but, 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 but I, we, I do see an interesting relationship that it is that when a mother, when the mothers of these students have, have a background in, gov in the government sector, it's more likely that their, 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 that their um, son or daughter is also interested in this work as well. Experience in government is the strongest predictor. So if you have prior experience, it's more likely for you to, to prefer um, this, this work. Uh, gender in this case was flipped. In general, some of the studies have either found really no relationship in terms of gender or found that females prefer um, the public service over males. And this study is, it shows that males are preferring the public service. Well, when, when I, and again, when I use the term public service, in this case I'm talking about government, government work, than then, then their male counterparts or their females counter, female counterparts. S study year. That is, first year students uh, are significantly more interested in working for government than second year students. I also want to ask you why. <laughs> you know, why? So this is mirroring, again, what we find in the literature. <laughs> what, what was that? 
All right, so, so some of my conclusions here. So prior experience in the public sector was the most significant predictor. So um, master's, master's degree students who have, um, as their experience increase in the field, the more likely for them to prefer this work after graduation. Years of study, um, again, uh, first year students valued uh, public service working in government significantly more than um, the second year students. Now, of course, th this is a cross-sectional study, so I'm not, not going to put a lot on, on, on the, 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 the causal statements of this, but it does support previous studies. And some of these previous studies were longitudinal studies that found the very same thing. So this, is, this lends support to that. And it implies that there is a decline that's happening uh, between uh, when students enter and when they're preparing to graduate. Um, and this pattern is similar to uh, what other studies have found in regards to public service motivation and first job choice. That is that students, when, when they first, when they, with high levels of public service motivation, when they take their first job in the field, they find it, it significantly drops. And, and, they, and they attribute this to a reality shock. Like, whoa, this is, this is hard. Dave was right. <laughs> you know, so, so, so we have support for that. Uh, but but um, one scholar explains it, explains it this way, and, and this is, they, she did a study on, on Harvard students. Um, she said, it is not that strong public-oriented students change their views, but that students with rather ambiguous inclination or disparaging attitudes at entry seems to have misgivings about government work confirmed or at least not countered by their training. So she's pointing to the curriculum um, in, in some way. So demographics matter too. In this case, males prefer government careers significantly more. And it's, and it's sort of, it supports sort of Frank and Lewis who found that women were more likely to work for government, though they were not more likely to prefer it. So, so there's a difference between preference, again, and, and actual occupational choice. So, so there's, these are not closely linked. Um, but again, at the start, my, analysis, my assumption here, and me and Dr. Blaze, is that exit public employees will have both, confidence as well as an interest. A minority, minority status and age approach significance and thus mirrors the findings in the, the existing um, research. But mothers matter too, right? So, um, so the career experiences of, of, um, of the survey participants' mothers were strongly and significantly related to master's degree students' career interests. So, uh, um, so it, and, it, and it largely contradicts some of the research that's found no um, relationship, but supports others, particularly in China, that, that found that there, there was a relationship between uh, what they call family situations, but they meant to, they were implying, you know, family background, their occupational backgrounds. Interesting here, PSM is not a significant predictor. So, uh, and, and uh, of the, these preferences, there are no differences in regards to students with high and low P PSM. I even looked at an interaction between, you know, PSM and first year uh, and year student. I found first, the first year uh, relationship that, for, that year study have to um, government career interest was not moderated, mediated, or interacting in any way with, 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 with public service motivation. So this co contradicts previous stu studies, particularly they're largely based on undergraduate students and or conducted in, in an international context. So from an international standpoint, we, they found the, these relationships. In this context, I, I did not. Uh, uh, so uh, basically then, it, it's saying that the, the socialization experiences received from society and degree programs may encourage students with high levels of public service motivation to, to seek alternative opportunities, such as a nonprofit sector, um, to, to fulfill their desire to serve the, the community. And with that as the end, but, but I want to say this, also what's very stunning for me is that programs really have, at least the ones I looked at, really have very little effect, but we know something is going on. Don't know what, but something is, is going on. So with that, I'm going to open up for, for questions and, and potentially ask you some questions as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a little conflicted about the research and the findings just mm -hmm. because I, I participated in it. So. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, this is about you, right? <laughs> so, but I guess coming from an intuitive standpoint, do you think that other variables such as uh, internships and things like capstones could potentially influence uh, career interest in government. Mm -hmm. By that I mean, 
you may go through an internship having one particular disposition or outlook on a particular career path, but you go into that field and you enter an internship, you actually have the work experience, and then your motivation to go to that particular career kind of decreases because of your mm -hmm. experiences. So could that be a, an influence? Into I, I, I think it would be, um, and particularly if I find that some programs are having capstones and other programs are, are not, and which, which I can imagine that, that there is, and I could easily um, include that as, as, as a variable by looking at this list and, and, and looking into that. So that's a good, um, a, a good suggestion. Uh, in, in terms of um, um, sort of directly in terms of community involvement, I asked that question, and I, I, and I don't see any relationship. Um, and this, you, I think, you know, you may have asked, you asked this in your research, but do you think there's a difference between, you know, the professional schools, which are kind of like mass, master standalone like we are, versus a traditional MPA that has a master's and a PhD program mm -hmm. with it? Do you think there is some, mm -hmm. you know, differences between, mm -hmm. you know, programs that offer those two degrees, you know, mm -hmm. where maybe some of the resources are more shuttled towards the PhDs mm -hmm. for research purposes mm -hmm. rather than the practitioner approach and maybe the faculty, you know, the, yeah. the faculty choices, you know, they, they mentioned some of the faculty there, but right. do you think that maybe that there is something in play there? I know you mentioned the standalone versus a part of a right. department, but... Right, 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 and, and that would be another dimension of, of, of that. I mean, you know, the degrees that are they're just solely, I mean, programs that are solely based or, or master's degree programs, you know, versus like, like this one. And so, in, in your case, you're, you're you're calling that a, a, a professional um, degree program versus those that that um, um, are not. I mean, that include more degrees. And uh, again, a great suggestion uh, um, to, to to take a look at that. I would argue uh, that um, it, it, interesting. The, from, from a flip side of this, one scholar found when, when she looked at programs that were in core public service programs and programs that were in um, non-core public service programs. She found that sort of the PSM, this is indirect, was, was significantly increased over the course of study, whereas in core public service program, it had no decrease and actually slightly decreased, although that difference was not, was not significant. I, I'm given these findings, given the overwhelming amount of these findings, I, I, I would probably argue that I was, wouldn't expect to see still a lot of differences uh, on, on, on that basis. Though, one, one could theorize, as, as, as you have, that you know, it, it, it programs that put their sole attention on students and, and graduating, perhaps, you know, students in, in, into degrees may be more effective in, in doing that. But, um, but, but on the flip side of that, though, again, so I'm thinking out loud here, um, um, the core problem that some of these scholars are having with curriculum is that we're so spread out, you know, and that we're doing everything. So, so, I, so, so the real question is, to, are degree programs who are standalone, are, more, are they more focused than those uh, that are not? And the evidence suggests that, that they're, they're, they're not necessarily more focused. Okay. So I have three quick comments or questions. The first one is, when we're teaching our students that the boundaries between the sectors mm -hmm. are blurry. Mm -hmm. uh, so that relates to uh, one of uh, the things that you mentioned. The other thing is, uh, have you, or is there any kind of variable in your model that uh, takes into consideration the length of the program itself? Is it a one-year program versus a two-year or three-year? Would that make an effect? As well as, uh, what about the placement of the graduates of the program? Mm -hmm. So maybe a school is very active in placing all of its graduate uh, or mm -hmm. graduates in the, in the public sector that might influence the, <coughs> the preferences of the, the students. And finally, I have a, com a quick comment about the, uh, the results regarding the, the international students mm -hmm. or the citizens. Although in many developing countries there's also this distrust between citizens and governments, however, in many developing countries, government is the main employer mm -hmm. versus the private or the nonprofit mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. As well as there's the issue of, uh, of the prestige working for the government versus the other sector. Right. Good, good, good points. Now, I, I probably won't be able to chart all three of those. <laughs> so, 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 your first question was what was the first question? <laughs> the blurring. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I agree. I mean, so, so, and, and that's largely NASA's response to, to, um, to Harvey's commission, that, look, that's the old school way of thinking. Things have expanded. There's more or less governance now, and that governance means more than government, you know, right? We, 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 um, so, so the counter to that, that some would argue, well, true, but what are we doing for government? I mean, so, so what are we, are we preparing students to go into that critical field? Are we countering the stereotypes that students have, or are we hindering that? So I don't, I don't think, I mean, so we can accept that it is, is broad, you know, so to speak, but, 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 but the real question is, can we be broad and yet be specific? Um, and the evidence, at least when it comes to career interest, um, students are overwhelmingly, given they already have pressures from society to not go into this field. I mean, what, what, what did Bill Gates say? Who wakes up wanting to be a bureaucrat? You know, you know, you know, you know so, so we already have these sort of things. It, it, some would argue it requires special attention um, in, in our programs to, to, to particularly counter those kinds of things if we want to Im improve the quality of our, um, of, 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 of our employees. Now, to, uh, to the second question. Uh, variables like length of program. Yeah, I, I did look at some variables of length. So, so your study is sort of proxy of, of how long students operate. But, but, but in terms of the, 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 the program itself, are programs one year versus programs two years or even online, um, in this sample, um, uh, most of the programs overwhelmingly are, are two-year programs. I think if there was one in there that was one year. So, um, but but I can imagine, you know, to follow up on that is to do sort of a, a uh, some sort of analyses on and, and, and to look back into my studies and, and see how, I mean, how many of them are. But overwhelmingly, they're they're mostly two years. So it'd be hard for me to get at that 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 particular question. Yeah, I think the point earlier Vlad was making about comparisons to professional school is mm -hmm. really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. For example, I, I went to school with a lot of most of the boys that thought they wanted to be engineers, and by the time they were done with the course of study, realized that's not what they mm -hmm. thought it was. And, and my guess is the same for law schools. I've had plenty of lawyers, mm -hmm. the people who went to law school that, that decided they didn't want to do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So I think rather than be alarmed by the mm -hmm. idea that there's a demotivational effect, uh, it might be consistent with, with other professions as well. Right. Uh, so, so that might be another way uh, to slice it. Also, I, I was wondering if your, your data on schools can unpack which programs have which views, and, and would NASPA help you to, to try to do that, or do they not want you to do that? Well, I, I would never expose my programs. <laughs> you know, it doesn't anymore. It's hard, it's hard getting them to, to participate. Many of them were very afraid that. That this would be some exposure of, of them, and we're, we're, we're very leery. I had to really convince some of the ones, and I have some pretty good programs in here. I, mean, I have some top programs um, in, in, in this sample, um, private schools and, and as well as public alike. Um, so um, I will be cautious about sort of narrowing down and pointing to particular programs. Now, I'll be more or less interested in doing this from a characteristic standpoint. So, certain characteristics of programs. And, and, and how that relates to some of these things. Now, now NASPA um, was, was very helpful um, with giving me their data. So, so part of this, I, I mean, part of this I didn't explain, I got a whole lot of information from NASPA on their credit schools that I was able to match against the sample. So, so the schools that I selected, if they were accredited, I was able to pull information from NASPA to fill in a lot of blanks. So, 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 um, so they were very helpful. So one of the follow-ups I want to do is just look at NASPA schools and see what these things, are there anything particular going on within that particular nested sample? Um, um, but, but, but to your statement about the professional schools, I, I think that, that, that is something that I could, I could easily do. Okay, so, okay that's also hands over, yeah. Uh, two uh, factors that I, I think it, are worth considering are one, the actual expansion of knowledge in, mm -hmm. that takes place in the student in the program. Mm -hmm. So for example, a first year student comes in wanting to work uh, in this field and is only aware of one or two big government players, for example, the CIA mm -hmm. or the State Department. Mm -hmm. And then as they spend more time in the program and learn more on the subject, they become aware that a lot of the same opportunities might exist with a company like Booz Allen Hamilton mm -hmm. or LMI mm -hmm. or so on. Mm -hmm. And then another issue and maybe this is just me feeling this, but student indebtedness 
could also play a role, uh, <laughs> sort of looking at your balance sheet and realizing that you need to get paid. Uh, <laughs> Uh, as perhaps an explanatory factor for moving towards the, uh, the private sector. Good, very, very good points. And, and to the last one, that, that's why the book school gives you so much money, right? <laughs> good point, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, I kind of had two main ideas when I was thinking about this. One, I didn't get to see the time frame that you did the study. Oh, okay, yeah. It, it was between um, 2013 was actually when it was, okay. when it was right. between like, what was it? We did it like, um, yes, it was September, and we completed it about in the middle of November, December. Okay, all right, because I was thinking, I least over the last five years, I've seen a lot of people move towards the private sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, ye
I anticipate wages will be fair. Okay. Then when I get offers, oh, if I'm a woman or a minority, right. I am more likely to have a wage penalty in the private sector. I will sort out. Right. So it's not surprising that men might think this is great, right. Right. but they see a premium mm -hmm. when they when offers are. Good, good, good point. That, 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 that's a very good point. Now, I, I will give you a little, when I looked at this from a nonprofit sector, found that women were more likely to choose nonprofit sector than, than, than men. So, 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 um, that, that, that still, so, yeah. Right. Okay. Good, good, good point. Um, I'm just curious, in terms of finding that uh, mother's experience mm -hmm. matters more than her father's experience? <laughs> well, I, well, I wouldn't say it matters more. I would never say that. Right? But, well, but, but, but. Uh, yeah. Because more survey respondents had mothers that worked in government fields, mm -hmm. or because, um, or that mm -hmm. more survey respondents with mm -hmm. fathers that worked in government ended mm -hmm. up choosing a different route. <laughs> Interesting. I, I, I should have put that on, on this. I, 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 I will look at that, but but um, so 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 so, so, your, so your your critique is that the reason why this is the case is because there are more mothers that, that work for government than than fathers. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just using that term. If, yeah. if it's yeah, do simply more mothers of your survey respondents work in government, mm -hmm. or do respondents with fathers that work in government uh, choose a different route, either nonprofit mm -hmm. or business? Good, 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 good question. I don't have an answer to that, but but I'll, I'll take a look at that. Good question. I, did, I, I didn't even think to, to to include that. Yeah, good question. Other questions? Uh, Jeff touched on this earlier, but I've I've heard criticisms of schools that have you know private schools that have high tuition that they don't produce as many. Maybe this is a touchy subject, you know, when you're trying to get school to participate, but, mm -hmm. but they don't produce as many public servants because it's harder to, um, you know, pay off the, the loans that they have to take on, potentially, mm -hmm. to go to school there. And mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you thought maybe that's a legitimate, you know, mm -hmm. critique of those schools or yeah. if literature's ever addressed that. So, uh, for the cost of attendance, you're, you're, you're saying, yeah, there, there, there are some literature in, in the economic literature that looked at sort of this question from the standpoint of, of pricing and, um, and, uh, and, and so forth. So, I mean, the argument is, yeah, I mean, I can imagine it, that, that would affect. I mean, and, and that is why, I mean, this is, at the end of the day, it, it, it is an um, administrative question. I mean, what do we do in our programs that can help mitigate some, some, some of these um, sort of um, um, these pressures to, to go into other fields? Um, and and cer certainly, as you pointed out, one of the pressures is, um, is cost. As, as well as, as someone pointing out, the economy. Uh, we have time for one last question. So I have a question for you. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so what do you think are, are the, the, the top reason why there's this difference between first years and second years? Why do you think? Yeah, what, what do you think? Is, is, is it, in your opinion, program? <laughs> is it something about you? What? Um, honestly, it's, I think that's actually, you talk about, you know, as they dwell more into, you know, as they learn more about the area, and I think really, I think the internship will play mm -hmm. a significant role because, you know, classroom is one thing and theory is one thing, but actually going out there and, you know, working, especially if you're working, you know, in a state level agency or federal mm -hmm. agency, actually working there and actually seeing and actually having that experience, yeah. that can really detract. So, for example, you know, I worked at, at a state agency in South Carolina, and when the question was, well, what did you learn? I said, well, I don't want to work for a state agency in South Carolina. Yeah, that's, that's my experience. Yeah, right, right. So, I mean, I really think that them learning more about it, and about it, but think specifically in our case, the internship will play, will have a, will have a significant uh, reason about why.